Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today we'll be addressing the question, are my goals compatible with God's goals? Now, this question refers to an important distinction with regard to our relationship with God. Christian speakers often point out, correctly, that impenitent sinners are making the mistake of trying to do things their own way, and that we should try to do things God's way. The question of having different ways of getting things done can be best understood with an analogy. Bob and Jack both want to get to Kansas, but there's many roads leading into Kansas, and each has a different idea about which way will be the fastest, and which is more likely to get them hopelessly lost. Because of his perfect knowledge, God's way to any destination will always be the best way. However, it's equally possible for Bob and Jack to want to go to two different places. Maybe Bob wants to go to Kansas and Jack wants to go to Illinois. They might follow the same road for a while, but they'd eventually have to part ways when going to their individual places of choice. This is the distinction between people having different approaches and different end goals. So the question for today is, are our end goals similar enough to God's end goals that we can justify taking the path he's set out for us? In matters of human affairs, this question actually comes up pretty frequently every time we vote for somebody or donate to a charity. A politician might support some evil action that we don't want them to, or a charity might be lying to us about how they spend their money. So let's start by comparing these to how our relationship with God works. God doesn't lie because of his moral perfection, but he also doesn't tell us everything that he plans to do, so there is some confusion there. Of course, God is unable to support evil actions, but he might support some good action that we don't personally like, so this is the first thing we should consider. If we want our goals to be compatible with the goals of God, number one, we need to learn to not detest good things. Remember, God loves everyone, and he's the source of all good things, not just some of them. While not being able to appreciate certain good things isn't necessarily something we can help, we shouldn't be saddened by the fact that something good happened or was supported. Also, because we're not aware of the full scope of God's plans, we may be worried about them or hesitant to accept them, even if we really don't hate anything that's good. This kind of worry comes about because we don't always trust God's goodness or benevolence. We're too used to dealing with corrupt human authority figures and don't have a lot of experience with good, trustworthy folks in positions of power. Therefore, there's another thing that we need. Number two, we need to understand that God, being morally perfect and totally benevolent, will never betray or disappoint us. People who say that God has disappointed them have never met God face to face. Even when God asked St. Paul to endure trials and difficulties, St. Paul never said he was disappointed. In fact, he rejoiced because he knew that there was an eternal weight of glory waiting at the end of the road, a glory and delight that could never disappoint, which brings us to the third and final thing that we need in order for our goals to be compatible with the goals of God. Number three, we need to be willing to be patient and prioritize our fulfillment in the next life over our satisfaction now. This is by far the most difficult one. The fact is, the life of sin that we live in right now prevents us from enjoying immortality. And it's precisely from our mortality that so many of our other problems arise. God wants to help us solve this problem by giving us a new, immortal life of joy, glory, and delight. But we've got to be willing to comply with his plan in order to make that happen. In short, God's goal is for us to be happy and fulfilled in heaven. And everyone wants to be happy and fulfilled. So long as we have the three qualities listed above, God's goal is precisely the same as our own, true and lasting happiness and fulfillment for ourselves. Next, will we do other things besides pray in heaven? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.